Hey, what's up, Kim peeps? What in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to perform stoichiometric calculations for redox reactions involving electrolytic cells. Basically, we're gonna have a lot of fun. So, breaking it down as always, numero uno, we are going to interpret and solve for any of the variables in the formula I equals Q over T. And then numero dos, we are gonna determine moles of electrons transferred in a redox reaction, which is gonna be important as you'll find out as we try to apply that formula I equals Q over T to electrolytic cells. <sighs> So, there are several stoichiometry calculations that can be applied to electrolytic cells. Again, remember that electrolytic cells take advantage of a redox reaction, albeit thermodynamically unfavorable, but still a redox reaction. So we're focused a lot on the movement of electrons, the gain and loss of electrons. And it turns out there's an amazing formula given to you on your screen, in your notes, and on your formula chart that relates the charge in coulombs, which again is related to our electrons per time in seconds. So how much charge in terms of electrons have flowed in a given amount of time? Now, once you know the charge in coulombs, you also know how many moles of electrons were involved in that reaction. Faraday's constant tells us the charge per mole of electrons. So by simply determining the amount of charge that has flowed through your cell and dividing it by Faraday's constant, you can determine the number of moles of electrons. If you determine your charge to be 96,500 coulombs, then you know one mole of electrons has flowed through your cell. If it's less than 96,500 coulombs, then you know you have less than a mole of electrons that flowed through your cell. Greater than 96,500, more than one mole of electrons that flowed through your cell. Math is so great. Now, once you know the number of moles of electrons and you know the half reaction for the metal that you're working with in your electrolytic cell, you can find out how many moles of your metal have played it out. So as you look at the example that is given to you in your notes and on your screen, there, we're looking at the reduction half reaction for gold. In the half reaction, we know that for every three moles of electrons consumed or gained by every one mole of gold ion, we're gonna get one mole of solid gold. So as we're working through some of these examples, if we were to say be working with gold, if we don't get three moles of electrons transferred, we're not gonna get one mole of solid gold plated out. And then once you know number of moles of your metal, you can then use what you know from the idea of molar mass to calculate the number of grams of metal. This is gonna be important then in some of those applications of electrolytic cells that we talked about earlier. We can determine how much metal is gonna plate out in an electroplating process, for example, or a refining process. All things that would be really helpful in industry or other applications. So let's take a look at a quick example to help understand how we're gonna use stoichiometry in these electrolytic cell type problems. How many grams of copper can be reduced by applying a 3.00 amp current for 16.2 minutes to a solution containing copper two ions? All right, the big equation that you're gonna use in problems like this are I equals Q over T. Again, I is our current, and current is essentially what charge has flown through our cell over what time in seconds? We know that we have a 3.00 amp current, which I'm gonna simply write as coulombs per second. We wanna know what amount of charge has passed through our cell in 16.2 minutes when we have a 3.00 amp current. Well, it's important to know we define amps as coulombs per second or charge per second. So before I go any further, I'm gonna convert my 16.2 minutes to seconds. Jump to my calculator, 16.2 times 16 is 972 seconds. I'll just slip that down here into my I equals Q over T equation. And then to solve for Q, I'm just gonna multiply these two values. Times three, we get 29100 and wow, we get 2916 coulombs of charge. I'm gonna remind myself of sig figs here and I'm feeling really great, but what does this tell me? That's the charge that flowed through my cell in 972 seconds. What we wanna do now is take that amount of charge and convert it to moles of electrons. And in every mole of electrons, there's 96,500 coulombs worth of charge. So before I even do this calculation, I should recognize that I'm gonna have less than a mole of electrons 
that have flowed through my cell. I end up with 0 0.0302 moles of electrons that have flowed through my cell in those 16.2 minutes. My next step is to figure out how many moles of copper will have plated out if I know my number of moles of electrons. Now, as I think about the fact that it's copper two plus, for every one mole of copper that's plated out, it's gonna require two moles of electrons. For every one mole of copper that's plated out, it's gonna require two moles of electrons. That's one, it's divided by two. It equals 0 0.0151 moles of copper that plated out or that could be reduced. Finally, let's just take that 0 0.0151 moles of copper and convert to grams. Let's jump to our calculator. Science, which means that if I ran a current of 3.00 amps for 972 seconds or 16.2 minutes, I would expect to get 0 0.960 grams of copper to be reduced or plated out in this situation. Boom. So this is a common type of calculation that you can expect to do for electrolytic cells involving the stoichiometry in your half reaction. And we are done.